everybody! Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today I'm telling you about a new project that I'm working on. Recently I started going to a miniatures group and their project for the year is a coffee shop. And you get to choose whatever kind of coffee shop you want to do. So of course I'm doing an abandoned post-apocalyptic coffee shop just because that's kind of my style. So. Um, I started on the project just because I was really excited about it and I did most of it off camera so far and then I was like why am I doing this this is so fun I want to share it with you so I'm kind of going back and um, today I'm going to be showing you the project and then I'm also going to be showing you how I did one of the main parts of the project so let me grab it for you this is my abandoned coffee shop and I'm just make sure it's all on camera for you here's the outside here's my little a delivery window so when you order your coffee let me show you the inside this is where the little scene will take place and this is all made out of foam board so I've been, it's very lightweight, and uh, I mean this part is made out of like um, poster board, this is made out of like a poster board material, and then these little pieces in here are wood pieces, like pre-cut wood pieces, but the brick is just foam board. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today, is how to make dollar store foam board look like realistic brick. I'm very excited about how this turned out. It was kind of an experiment. I really didn't know if I was going to be able to pull off making foam board look like this. Um, and it actually turned out to be fairly easy. So I'm going to be showing you that process today. And then next week um, I'm going to show you... Okay, so my goal for this project is to uh, make this look as textured as possible. So already I have a lot of texture showing up in the brick, I have a lot of texture showing up in the floor with the broken tile, and so my goal is that when you look at this project you would know how it would feel to stand in it. So you would understand that if you walked through this project, you would hear the crunch of all the broken tile and pieces of um, broken brick that were on the floor. So texture is the big part of this project. So on that thought, next week I am going to show you how to do peeling wallpaper. And as of right now, I have no idea how I'm going to do that. But uh, when I figure it out, I'm going to share it with you. <laughs> so um, anyway, but like I said, this week I'm showing you how to make this brick out of foam board. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is just regular old foam board. This is foam board from the Dollar Tree. It's a dollar for a huge sheet. It's nothing special. Um, so yeah, that's usually the foam board that I use. You're also going to need an X-Acto knife, a pen, and a ruler. So in order to create our brick we first need to make the grout lines and I'm using lines that are 3 8 inch apart and I'm drawing those lines and I'm going to cut along the lines with my exacto but not all the way through. Then I'm going over them again with a ballpoint pen lightly and this is going to help make an indentation where the grout line should be. And so you'll see um, I'm just kind of eyeing where the brick separation lines are and then I'm going back over it with the ballpoint pen to make an indentation. Next, if you're making an old brick wall, I'm just going and cutting out where bricks would have fallen out and I'm just kind of doing this by eye, what I think looks good. Next you're going to want some Mod Podge. I always use the matte Mod Podge because it doesn't leave a bright shine and I'm going to coat the front of the brick wall. This helps keep it together because you just cut a bunch of lines halfway through the foam board. So in order to keep it from falling apart, put a layer of Mod Podge on there. Next, I'm going to use my fingernail to make an indentation all the way around the brick border. 
and this is to make the bricks that are popping up over the top or on the side look more rounded. If you don't like to use your fingernail, you can also use a tool for this, but I find my fingernail works perfectly fine. Next, I'm going to take a dark gray. You can choose whatever color you want for your grout lines, but I'm going to use this gray and I'm going to paint the entire front of the brick wall. And I'm actually going to do two coats of this. After that, we're ready to add some texture. So I'm going to use the same gray paint, some tacky glue, and some sand. I'm going to mix them pretty much in equal parts, um, but you can kind of adjust the mixture to what you think you need. But this is going to create a very concrete-like mixture. What I want is the sand texture to sit on top of the brick, because a brick is very rough, and currently the foam board is very smooth and so in order to create that real brick texture I'm just gonna dab this mixture on top of the gray paint that I already painted so when I start adding more colors onto the brick it picks up that texture and just gives you the look of real brick. After that's dried, I'm ready to start making the various colors that you see in old brick walls. I'm going to use this cream to make a few light patches. A lot of times you can see on brick walls where there's like some white mixed in with a lot of the colors. So I'm just going to put a couple of patches, I'm not going to overdo it. And then I'm going to take a brick red and I'm just going to dab it on with a paper towel. I'm not painting it on because I do not want it to get in the grooves where the grout is. And I'm also going to use a little bit of gray. I'm going to go back and forth between my gray and my brick red so that I can um, just play with it. I mean, get creative with it. Um, keep putting paint on until you like how it looks. And so this just kind of comes with practice. Um, you can also look at, at examples of real brick walls to see what kind of colors you want to show through. Next, I'm just going to take some black paint and I'm going to dry paint this on. This, I kind of want it to give like a sooty look, like it's just been there, like things have gotten on the brick wall. It's oily and old and it's just collected dust and dirt over the years. So that's just a dry brush technique. After that's done, I'm going to go back to my gray, concrete -y type mixture that I made and I'm going to make it look like there's some construction goo just seeping out of this wall. Maybe like the uh, masons weren't very careful with their, um, with their grout or like something is like built up and is coming down out of the brick holes. And so this just adds another visual layer of texture. Another thing you can do with this process is take the bricks that you cut out, make individual bricks. Um, i first going to do a layer of that concrete -y gray mixture, and then I'm going to follow those same steps. And if you go through that, you'll come out with um, just some individual bricks you can have lying at the base of the brick wall, and it you know gives that true appearance of, wow, those bricks really did fall out of that wall, even though we know they're foam board. Um, it just gives some more visual interest to your project. And there you go, that's the brick wall from foam board process. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can use this in so many ways, you can cut them to any shape. It really worked for my coffee shop. I'm so excited that it worked out <laughs> and I'm glad to share it with you guys today. Uh, I look forward to next week showing you the textury peeling wallpaper project. You guys have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.